Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another SLG Meetup. I'm super excited to bring you another interesting and successful guest to our SLG Meetups. Now for this time, we're gonna be flying all the way to Turks and Caicos, where we're gonna meet with a very successful real estate broker who is the managing partner at the agency. And not only he is a killer when it comes to luxury real estate, but he is a former lawyer and also a current, <laughs> currently a rugby player. I mean, this guy is doing everything, very cool guy. And he's gonna tell us all about the current market trends in the island when it comes to the real estate, about the lifestyle and about some of the things on how to promote such a beautiful destination. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy it. Sean O'Neill, what's going on my brother? Good to see you. I'm great. I'm great. How are you doing this morning? Cannot complain. We're living in beautiful destinations that I'm kind of jealous of what's happening in Turks and Caicos. It's such a unique place. So I'm glad that we're doing this today. So thank you for joining. No, it's great to be here you know um waking up on a sunny uh you know nice cool breeze beautiful morning here in the Turks and Caicos there's a few other places in the world I think I choose to be today wow so listen tell us a little bit about yourself because I'm very curious to know Turks and Caicos such a beautiful destination and you are like currently selling some of the most incredible new developments and properties in the island and you're just showcasing the lifestyle in a way that I'm sure a lot of people are going to be so jealous, especially as the winter is approaching. It's like, man, these guys live in the dream over there. So you are actually born. You were born in Turks and Caicos, yeah. right? Yeah, I, um, it surprises people a lot yeah. when I say that to them. You know, I regularly get asked the question, oh, how long have you been here? Uh, but I say <laughs> since birth. I mean, I do. I have fun, um, you know, poking at my business partner, Trevor, um, you know, because his family have been here for generations. But he was born in Nassau. And I say, well, I was born in Grand Turk. So we have, um, you know, very lucky to have been born in this beautiful country, a very different place when I was born here um, compared to where we are now. We've seen incredible growth. Uh, my parents are originally Irish, uh, came out here off the back of an advertisement in the Irish Times, intended to stay for three years and never left. Uh, so I was born here. My two younger brothers were born here as well. I went to secondary school and university uh, in Dublin. And I like to say I've done the trifecta of dirty jobs. I've worked in politics, law, and real estate. So <laughs> between the three of those, I've had there some great go. experience. Um, yeah, I moved back here in 2011 and kind of transitioned from real estate advisory to legal capacity uh, into real estate brokerage and, and love it every single day. Wow. As you mentioned right there, you've been touching on the different angles on how to become now a very successful real estate broker because you're bringing the knowledge and the experience from all these other things that you've been doing. And listen, there is nothing more beautiful than to sell not just the real estate in Turks and Caicos, but the lifestyle, the dream of being there because you were born there. So you know what it is to be part of that beautiful island. And tell us a little bit about before we jump into the country itself and some of the things that you're seeing over the years. You are the managing partner with the agency, right? Which is a very well-known luxury boutique, real estate brokerage internationally. And when they opened the location there in Turks and Caicos, it was like a boom, right? Because it was like opening new opportunities. Absolutely. I mean, we were the first franchise of the agency. Um, ourselves and Cabo San Lucas opened around the same time. And when we started, uh, we had to explain to people what the agency was because it was a predominantly West Coast based um, company in around Los Angeles, super high end luxury. The first I heard of it was it was all celebrities and, and athletes. Mm -hmm. And of course, when I was my business, other business partner, Ian presented me with some of the information about the agency. As soon as I went through, uh, the deck that he sent me, I was like, I I'm in, this is amazing. It was a, um, an ethos and a set of deliverables that I felt we didn't have here. Um, and it was just exciting. It's, you know, collaborative, you know, we work very closely with people in other offices and we're we're an extension of each other you know i can call on on friends and colleagues in toronto and new york uh, all over and ask them their opinions how would you handle this how would you you address it and then as you kind of alluded to earlier we have a nice little back and forth where when the weather starts to turn i tease <laughs> them about <laughs> um, I bet. about uh, yeah so and, and i enjoy doing that you you know life is about having a good sense of humor you have to have some fun while you're doing it hundred percent. I agree. And you're doing it the right way. And uh, look, you chose to be in a perfect destination where, as you mentioned, it's driving so many people. And look, initially when I went to Turks and Caicos, it was more of a, 
trip with all these other jet setters and it became like a trendy destination and as you mentioned with the agency you know a lot of these celebrities athletes they all go on vacation in Turks and Caicos so the mindset of oh I can actually own real estate here I can actually have something here because it has been developing over the years tremendously I mean the projects and the things that are happening there are fantastic so tell us a little bit about what you've seen over the years in Turks and Caicos when it comes to the real estate and a destination in general. Yeah, I mean, look, Turks and Caicos is a brand unto itself. Um, there's, there's an arc in one episode of Modern Family where two of the characters, the, their trip is going to Turks and Caicos. You, you can't pay for that level of, of advertisement. And as we've seen over the years, more athletes and celebrities who've come down here and obviously with the growth of social media, that has continued to enhance Turks and Caicos as a destination. And I think, you know, um, Sean Combs, P. Diddy was here for his 51st birthday, not long after we reopened after COVID. And he had Mary J. Blige and Naz and lots of other people who were here with him. And that helped really kind of push our tourism product as we came out of that kind of lockdown period. So I think over the years, we've been very lucky because if you look at the island I'm on now, Providenciales, there was really no development or no significant development here before the 60s. There were three small fishing villages. Um, then the island started to develop. Turtle Cove Marina was put in place. Uh, more roads were cut. The power plant went in. And from that, we have had a, um, a group of developers who have decided that they were going to target a niche market. Uh, we don't have the economies of scale of the Dominican Republic, Cuba, or Jamaica. We can't compete for uh, high volume tourism. So let's go after the high value tourists. Now, when it comes to the marketing, right, because there is a whole finesse on how you promote these type of properties and the destination itself. Is there any specific approach that you are taking on like social media? Are you doing a lot of collaborations with other luxury brands? Like what is some of the strategies that you're currently implementing? Yeah, we, we work with a lot of other agents and other markets. I mean, our, and we're very heavy on digital and social media. Uh, because mm -hmm. that's a great medium to get people's attention. But I think our approach as an office is that first and foremost, we want to promote the Turks and Caicos Islands and we want to get people to come here. Um, I think we feel like we have a responsibility. You know, we're, we're all, all from here. We have a, a love of the country. If we can help bring tourists here, they're going to spend more money and that's going to support the economy in general. If they happen to buy a property, that amazing. If they happen to use us to buy it, that's even better. Um, <laughs> but but, I, but I'm a big believer, you know, uh, as you mentioned, you know, I've represented the country in, in rugby and in beach soccer, um, and I'm a, a passionate advocate for the country in general. So I think that that's as, a, as someone who's involved in marketing properties that happen to be in the Turks and Caicos, we need to promote the country first. Um, and then after that, we obviously do a lot of collaboration, whether it's within um, the agency network. So uh, we we're looking at having events in New York in January next year. Um, and then also work with other real estate groups that we're involved in, like Realm, Who's Who of Luxury Real Estate, so that we're not just containing it to people who are within our existing ecosystem, but we're going to agents who are members of Compass, Sotheby's, Caldwell Banker, um, Keller Williams, because all of these um, agents have clients who come to the Turks and Caicos. Mm -hmm. They might not know it, but we want, I, w I mean, I want them to be triggered. If someone says they go to the Caribbean, they go, oh, where are you going? Uh, and they go, oh, go to Turks and Caicos. Oh, I know Sean. You should reach out to him. I, I had an agent from Charlotte. I had an agent from Charlotte yesterday, um, you know, call me because she has clients who are interested in coming down here and buying something. Um, and, you know, you're, you're only ever one conversation away from, uh, from someone who's going on vacation. So you just have to figure out how you're going to identify the right people. And once they're in the Turks and Caicos, this is a very small place. Our, our population is less than 45,000 people. Uh, we haven't had a, a lot of development in comparison to the rest of the Caribbean. So there's a lot of opportunity for people who are coming down um, to buy and find properties that suit what they need. And that for me is, is the biggest thing, is that we look at ourselves as real estate advisors, not as salespeople. Um, and you have to guide people to find something that really suits what it is that they're looking for and matches their needs. Wow. So, so tell me what will be like some of the top three benefits of investing in the Turks and Caicos? I mean, we're very lucky because we're uh, a British overseas territory who uses the United States dollar, which means that there's no restriction on uh, money coming in or out. Uh, we have a very easy to understand registered land system. So when you have your title, that's it. Uh, and that's guaranteed by the crown. 
we have no income tax, we have no annual property tax, we have no corporation tax, we have no inheritance tax or capital gains tax. Uh, I like to joke that we have one of the best tax systems in the world because most of our revenue comes from tourists, but people from other destinations are, are paying that tax for us. Um, but, um, but also as well, you, know, you can, uh, ownership of a property here qualifies you to apply for annual residence. Um, and then you can kind of come and go as freely as you like. And, you know, a lot of those, I think each of them individually assist us in getting people through some of the hurdles of understanding how the process works. Um, you know, you don't have, uh, you don't, you don't have a complicated route of title system where you have to go back through hundreds of years of documents to figure out who really owns what. I think particularly when you're advising people on a farm purchase, simplicity is really important. Um, and I think we do a really good job of making the process easy. And I think, again, that's something that has come to pass over 30 or 40 years and having had the benefit of being a smaller country mm -hmm. that can see what has worked in other places and what hasn't. Wow, no, these are great points. And it's good to know because those are great incentives for somebody to go and invest over there. <laughs> yeah, I'm even like starting to think it's like, hmm, I thought Dubai, but now having the Caribbean, it's much easier. No, but listen, I think those are great points and people need to know more about these benefits because it's not just about a beautiful destination that you can have a beautiful home to vacay whenever you need it, but you can actually do so much more with it. But I got to ask this question, right? Because everything sounds very nice, but what has been some of the most difficulties that you've been facing being a real estate broker in the Turks and Caicos? Um, I mean, I think that you obviously have to, you have to guide people through all of these questions. I think there's, there's usually a million reasons why someone won't buy a property down here. Uh, you need to be patient and you need to have time. Um, you know, for any, any agent who come, anyone who comes to me who says they want to become an agent, I'm very frank about how long it often takes to sell a property here uh, and that you have to be in it for the, the long haul uh, and you have to have a passion for what you're doing. I like, I love going to work every day. Uh, not every day is perfect, uh, but that's life, right. Uh, but if you come in, if you if you approach it from the perspective of of a passion for your job, you're going to see success. Caribbean time moves slower than the rest of the world. I think sometimes um, sometimes people uh, who come from North America in particular have to adjust a little bit to that. Uh, but it's also part of the reason you're buying in the Caribbean, right? You could. You could buy in parts of North America and you might get things a bit swifter, um, but it means that when you get there, you're probably not going to have the same laid back way of life um, that you would when you're down here. So there, you know, there are the occasional hiccups. We, we live in a part of the world where we have to keep an eye on hurricane season every year. But again, we, we counter some of these challenges by the modern homes that are all being built are solid block concrete rebar with hurricane rated windows and doors. So there are lots of challenges that we face that we've already figured out how to overcome. Uh, and so that's one of the things every day we, we come in and we try to be very innovative uh, about what we do from a marketing perspective in the same way that the people who are building here are trying to be innovative about how they create a product that's going to be able to withstand any of the challenges that we face. So listen, Sean, thank you so much. I mean, I just wanted to ask you the last question. We always ask this to all of our guests and I'm very curious, you living there, what is really the definition of luxury to you? The definition of luxury to me is time. It's, it's being able, it's being, having the opportunity to do the things that you want. Um, you know, life, life is short. And I think that if you don't, if, if you have the opportunity, which a lot of people don't, to be able to do the things that you want to do, that is the definition of luxury. Wow. Well, I couldn't agree more with you. It's been a great conversation. Now for anybody that is interested in learning more about real estate in Turks and Caicos, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Sean O'Neill RE um, and the same on YouTube. Uh, you can find us at the agency re .tc, or send me an email to sean.oneill at the agency re .tc. I'd be happy to answer any questions that they have and you know, guide them through the process. And uh, listen, anybody that is going to be tuning into this later on, I will recommend 100% to follow you because it's a lot of fun and it's a lot of inspiring content to see these beautiful homes in such a beautiful island. Like it's just, uplift yourself you know like talking about the vision board like you just start thinking wow this is something that i can aspire to to go towards so i really like this conversation sean i appreciate your time definitely we have to organize a trip whether you is coming here to miami or uh, we're going there to see you and let's have fun doing it as you mentioned
One hundred percent. No, it's been great. We enjoy, you know, it's a, it's, it's a beautiful place to talk about and thank God I get to do it every day. <laughs> well, keep living the dream, my friend. I got to see you play some rugby as well and we'll see each other very soon. <laughs>